I will renew purifier vertical shaft bearings. Without further ado, let's start. During the course of this video, there will be a manual showing like this to keep you on track. First remove the bowl itself, if you haven't seen the bowl removal video, you can check it up for yourself in the video description. Next remove the water supplying device starting with the two hoses and the three key bolts. We will use this special tool provided to pull the bowl bush. Look closely and pay attention to details, it may seem to be easy by watching but it is different in the actual process. This is the bowl bush. With the same special with the additional two bolts, pull the water supplying device. Loosen the key first for smooth removal. This is the water supplying device. Next remove the mist cover. This is the mist cover. In this video there will be no story but there is a life lesson I want to share with you, pay attention since this will be a gold of knowledge you may not know. In life we have three things that we can spend the most common is the money itself but most 98% people don't know the other which is your time and energy. Usually most of the person and the people I know don't even take the time to budget their money how else they can budget their time and energy. Remember we all only got 24 hours a day, 8 hours for sleep 10 hours for work and that leaves us only 6 hours for self improvement and a work to better ourselves in our future, so do yourself and favor and start to make a good use of your time daily not to spend it in the matters that don't really matter. Got it? Good. This is the whole set of bearing housing, bearing sleeve, bearing cover, spacer, spring, etc. Now we remove the spiral gear to free the vertical shaft. If the spiral gear is in place the vertical shaft cannot be removed. The vertical shaft is now ready to be pulled. Put the cap nut to make sure the thread in the shaft is undamaged. There you have it, this is the most of the components that made the vertical shaft assembly. Now for renewal of parts. 
put the vertical shaft in a vise to hold. Careful not to damage the shaft. Put the two bolts and this will act as a puller to the lower bearing case. This is the bearing case. And this one is the spacer. Put it together to avoid misplacement. We will use this special tool to remove the middle bearing case, the collar, and the bearings itself. This is the lower bearing. This one is the collar. This one is the mid bearing with bearing case. Lastly, this one is the bearing cover. Detached the mid bearing to the bearing cover. This is the bearing case. This is the middle bearing. In installing the middle bearing put the inner piece of the bearing first. The bearing was an inline type and can be detached purposefully. You might wonder why I don't use a small pipe to push the bearing. Well I can't find one and time is to, the essence and the work must go on. Now we will install the middle bearing case with the new bearing of course with the holes facing downwards. Next is the bottom bearing with the collar in the middle, lubricate and fit to place. Use any hard hollow objects to push through the insides of bearing. That ends the work in the lower portion of the shaft. Now we will proceed in the upper part of the shaft to renew the upper bearing starting with the lock nut and the lock washer. This is the lock nut. This is the lock washer. Slight tap to the bearing case to remove. Careful not to bend or damage the shaft.
This is the upper bearing case. Same procedure, slight tap on the upper bearing. And for our bearing, brought to you by NTN Bearings, this is not sponsored, how I wish it is. LOL. Now let's fit the bearing case and the new bearing itself by tapping the outsides of the bearing. Lubricate for smooth assembly. And then install the shaft. Put in the vise and slight tap to the insides of the bearing. Careful not to damage the bearing and the threaded part of the shaft. When doing this for the first time I suggest you use a small pipe. In this video it's only done by professionals and veterans like yours truly lol. In placement of the lock nut make sure to fill at the groove of the shaft and then install the lock nut end. Tight accordingly. Use a screwdriver to fill the lock washer to the lock nut to hold both into place. Put the spacer and there you have it complete procedure of bearing renewal. Next part is installing. Clean sump tank first then we remove the spring seat together with the steel ball and the spring to check its condition. This is the spring. This is the steel ball. This is the spring seat. This is the bearing cap of the upper bearing. We replace the O-ring with new one. This is also a bearing cap in the upper part. We replace the o-ring as well. For a little demonstration and to give you a picture of how it's fitted inside, look closely. And that is the placement of each part inside. This is the oil from the sump tank. It was contaminated by water and will be replaced later. Now, putting it back all together, first with the spring, steel ball, and the spring seat. After that is the whole shaft itself. The lower bearing case has a feather key and to be aligned the hole in bearing housing fitted in the frame where the spring and steel ball resides. Next we install the bearing housing assembly, this assembly has a groove that is to be fitted in shaft bearing case feather key. Put 
Put the spacer. Put the flat spring. Put the bearing cap. And put the O-ring in the bearing housing. The bearing housing has two O-rings the lower and the upper. Then put the bearing housing cover. Put the bearing cap. Put the three hexagonal bolt into place and tight accordingly. Put the mist cover. Now we test the bearing housing assembly for leaks by opening the water hose from the closing valve and plugging the water drain. You'll see what I mean a moment later. This is the water drain with my hand. We visually check for leaks in the sump and in this case it looks good, no leaks at all, we've done a good job here fellas. Test is over release the water and close the valve. <music> Lastly, install the water supplying device. It was cleaned before and if you haven't seen how to dismantle this component, feel free to watch the video in the description below. Tighten to place and connect the hoses of closing and opening water, and we test afterwards to ensure it working fine. This is the low pressure closing water. This one is the high pressure opening water. There's a reason why it's low and high pressure, if you want know why you can leave a comment and let me know. Remove the cap nut and put the bowl bush in place. Make sure there's no oil or grease in between of bowl bush and the shaft to avoid slippage. <music> Lastly connect the spiral gear with the three hexagonal bolts and tight it to place. That is all. I hope you got some lessons. This is code. <laughs>